My name is Emily Flathers and I teach K through three music at Encanto School in the Osborne District of Central Phoenix. Something about me is I love to write songs. I love to write songs. Anything you say, you can sing it and it's just soars. Today we're going to look at writing songs together. We're going to take a series of small choices and build a song ourselves. And it's really pretty easy once you break it down into those steps. Let's get started first with warming up our voices. Can I hear from you copying after me? Ba, 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 ba. Cha, 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 cha. Whoop, 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 woo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Beep, beep, bop, bop, bop. Wee! Wow, you really stretched your voice this morning. Nice. It's time to get our bodies warmed up a little bit too. How about some shoulder rolls? Shoulder rolls, shoulder rolls. What we're doing is unlocking our body so our voice can flow freely. How about some arm squiggles? Nice. How about some Egyptian arms going on? Nice, and shake it out. Good, your body has to be awake. Your brain needs to be awake. A little massage for the brain. Nice, okay. Well, I'd like to warm us up today with a song called My Little Wagon. And I have a little wagon, and I wonder, do you know what color this is? It's red, but I'm going to change it, so watch out. My little wagon's painted red. My little wagon's painted red. My little wagon's painted red. I think I'll paint it <gasps> blue. My little wagon's painted blue. My little wagon's painted blue. My little wagon's painted blue. I guess I'll paint it yellow. My little wagon's painted yellow. My little wagon's painted yellow. My little wagon's painted yellow. I guess I'll paint it Ooh, green. You can sing with me, sure. You know how it goes now. My little wagon's painted green. My little wagon's painted green. My little wagon's painted green. I guess I'll paint it <gasps> brown. My little wagon's painted brown. My little wagon's painted brown. My little wagon's painted brown. I guess I'll paint it <gasps> black. My little wagon's painted black. My little wagon's painted black. My little wagon's painted black. I guess I'll paint it. Invisible. Wow, you really knew those colors and now you know the song too. This type of song is called a zipper song. A zipper song is a song that kind of stays the same, but one or two words change. You just drop in new words and it makes a whole new part to the song. You just unzip, drop in the new one, zip it back up, good to go. Well, the type of song we're going to look at today, the zipper song, is found all over the place. We're going to see it today in a book. This is a book by Margaret Wise Brown and Leo and Diane Dillon. Margaret Wise Brown wrote the words 70 years ago. Leo and Diane Dillon made the pictures together just 15 years ago. So they never even met, but they made some really cool things together. Some books are made side by side, some books are made from a distance. It's called Where Have You Been? And you're gonna see that zipper format going on. So let's find out. Ooh, I see our interviewer. This owl is going to be our companion through this book, interviewing different animals. I see there's a, a flashlight to see what's going on, an ink and paper, and a hat, to, oh, and an umbrella. So this owl is ready for whatever she has to face. So let's get started with the book. Little old cat, little old cat, where have you been? Been looking at this and that, said the little old cat. That's where I've been. Oh, I see a squirrel. Little old squirrel, little old squirrel, where have you been? Been out for a whirl, said the little old squirrel. That's where I've been. It's got a little squirrel helicopter going on there. Ooh, I see the interviewer has to get down to the fish down there and, and, and get a good interview going. Little old fish, little old fish, where have you been? 
Wherever I wish, said the little old fish, that's where I've been. <coughs> little old horse, little old horse, where have you been? In the clover, of course, said the little old horse, that's where I've been. Getting kind of a rhythm going to this. Little old toad, little old toad, where have you been? Been up the road, said the little old toad, that's where I've been. I'm feeling that beat. It's sweet, I'm feeling that beat. And the frog, little old frog, little old frog, where have you been? Been climbing a log, said the little old frog, that's where I've been. I think I'm kind of feeling a little sing song coming to this as well. Ooh, a mole digging down in the ground. Little old mole, little old mole, where have you been? Been down in a hole, said the little old mole, that's where I've been. Wow, look at this, it's to interview a whale. Little old whale, little old whale, where have you been? Down under the gale, said the little old whale, that's where I've been. A gale is a mighty storm with high winds, so it's safe for the whale down under the gale. Pretty cool. Oh, one of my favorite pages, the lion. Little old lion, little old lion, where have you been? With friends of mine, said the little old lion, that's where I've been. They're making some cool jazz. And a bird, looks like a crow, but they're gonna call it a rook, same thing. Little old rook, little old rook, where have you been? At the end of the book, said the little old rook, that's where I've been. Nice story, nice things going on. I think we could write our own verse, what do you think? All right, let's do it. Um, book down. Minds up, warm up your brain. Little stretch, let's do a pretzel stretch. I love the pretzel stretch. I'm gonna put my hands like this. They're gonna grab each other. Oh, it feels so good. Let's actually get our minds working nice and unroll that pretzel. Oh, shake it out. So, to make a song, to make our own chunk of a song, what do we need to do? Well, there's three steps. First, we have to choose an animal. Choose an animal we're gonna write about. Hippopotamus, this, this is. Uh, it's kind of hard to rhyme. We're gonna pick animals with one syllable. Cat, dog, I made a list. Ant, bear, deer, goat, snake. Now those are all some fun animals. We could have a lot of cool things for them to do. Once we have our animal picked, we're going to rhyme with the animal's name. That's our second step. And the third step will just to be make one little short sentence. Should we get started? Let's start. Step one, we're going to pick our animal. Uh, who wants to write about an ant? Give me a thumbs up if you want an ant. All right. How about bear? Nice. And deer? Uh-huh. Who wants to do what about a goat? and a snake. All right, well, it looked like a lot of you chose bear, so bear is gonna be what we do. Let me, is it red? I'm gonna circle it in red. Bear. So what we're gonna do today is find rhymes for the word bear. Bear, bear, bear. Huh, go ahead and start shouting them out. Hair, absolutely, hair. I'm gonna use the A-I to do that sound, hair. Air, you bet, air is hiding in the word hair. Care, like Care Bears, A-R-E. Yep, share for sure, share. I'm glad you're sharing your ideas with me. Ooh, scare, you could get scared of a bear. You guys are coming up with a lot. Any more? Yes, pear, which kind of pear? Pear. A pair of bears, like two of them, or pair. Wow, sound the same. Uh, how about two or three more? 
where, where did that bear go? Oh, the other kind of where, where, clothes you wear. Someone said underwear, you guys are silly. Awesome, we've got a great two, four, six, eight, nine. I wonder if there's one more. You bet, dare, guys, you are great. Dare, now we have got a great list. Our last step means we're gonna take one of these words and connect it to the bear. So let's think, how uh, can we connect bear and hair? We know they're hairy, brushing his hair. A bear brushing his hair, nice. That reminds me of that song down by the bay. Did you ever see a bear brushing his hair? Or maybe it's Comey. How about air? What could a bear do with the air? Yes, yeah, sniffing the air, sure. How about care? Bear who doesn't care? I don't care. All right, nice. And share. You could share a hug with a bear, nice. Ooh, how about scare? The bear could give you a scare, yeah. Okay, any others for scare? Okay, how about pair? Pair of bears, that one might be tricky. How about pear? This kind of pear, the fruit. Bear could be eating a pear for sure. Okay, you guys are great. Uh, where? I don't know where the bear is. We can do that. How about where? A bear who didn't know what to wear? And dare. Uh-huh, touch him if you dare. Guys, this is great. We can pick any one of those and drop them into the song, into the, song, into the story. Um, let's try it. Let's try bear combing his hair. So we start with little old. Little old bear, little old bear, where have you been? Been brushing my hair, said the little old bear. That's where I've been. Really nice. You want to try one more? That's what I was thinking, eating a pear is right there. Sing it with me. Little old bear, little old bear, where have you been? Been eating in a pear, said the little old bear. Ow. That's where I've been. You guys, we did it. We made our own tiny chunk to drop into the song. We zipped in a new chunk, a new verse. I'm so pleased with you guys. There's so many songs that are like this. There's oodles and oodles of songs that just you drop in a new word and it goes on and on. Um, we've got a chance to take another little stretch and maybe we've got time to do one more. Sure. All right, um, can you put your feet out? I don't know if you've been sitting this whole time. If you haven't been sitting, maybe you wanna stand up and stretch out those feet. Oh, you point them. If you're in a chair, you can do one of my favorite dances, which is called the heel toe dance. It goes something like this. I go heel toe, heel toe. I go heel toe, heel toe. I go heel toe, heel toe. And I shake my wiggles out and the other foot would do the same thing. My foot goes heel, toe, heel, toe. It goes heel, toe, heel, toe. It goes heel, toe, heel, toe. And I shake my wiggles out. It's a zipper song. Yes, we could do something else besides our feet. How about our knees? My knees go up, down, up, down. They go up, down, up, down. They go up, down, up, down. And I shake my wiggles out. What could your elbows do? My elbows go front, back, front, back. They go front, back, front, back. They go front, back, front, back. And I shake my wiggles out. How about your eyeballs? My eyes look left, right, left, right. They go left, right, left, right. They look left, right, left, right. And I shake my wiggles out. Ooh, that one could make me dizzy. Wow. Are you ready to try one more? Let's try one more. Um, so we had a lot of people who said goat. So I think we'll go ahead and go with goat. Um, I'll go ahead and use the brown because, oh, I didn't bring the brown with me. Eh, that's all right, we'll use blue. So some rhymes for goat. Um, this is, I wanna, before you guys start shouting about, another way to come up with these rhymes is to start with the alphabet. You can put a letter of the alphabet and then the last part of goat. So if I cover this G up here, I have oat. And I can just put in a new letter. So a oat, not a word. How about, what comes A, B, C, B? Boat, for sure. So let's get down here, boat. A, B, C, how about C? <gasps> coat. 
How about D? Dote? That actually is a word. To dote on someone is to care for them and take care of them very much. Uh, Eote, foat, goat we already have. Hote, mm, we're running out of rhymes, I think. Coat with a K, loat, moat, and the castle has a moat. So you guys can try this at home. Anyone can do this. It's, it's a fun time to pass the day. You can even make your own book. How cool is that? So moat is a couple more. Uh, and note, note, ooh, music, note. I like that one. They have music and everything. Uh, Pot, wrote, ooh, maybe a goat was going to write something down. Uh, I think that's a good place. Oh, one more, tote. So we went through the alphabet and got those beginning sounds. So how can you connect the word goat to one of these words? Well, if, if you read uh, Dr. Seuss, Green Eggs and Ham, I would not uh, eat them with a goat. I would not eat them in a boat. So boat, riding in a boat. Uh, how about coat? A, yes, a coat could wear a coat. Nice. Don't. We're not so used to that. A goat might dote on its little, little kidlets. Ooh, the moat. The warrior goat with his sword crossing the castle gates. Uh, moat, it's all right. What, do you, what would you do with a note? Singing a note? Road is all right, and tote, I spelled tote wrong. Silly me. It's funny how these vowels work out that way. Tote, as in to carry something. All right, I think note would work. Boat was pretty strong, and coat. So let's do coat, since Dr. Seuss already got to the boat one first. Little old goat, little old goat, where have you been? Been wearing a coat, said the little old goat. That's where I've been. Good job, guys. And then we'll, what do we say with note? Yes, singing. Let's try it. Little old goat, little old goat, where have you been? Been singing a note, said the little old goat. Where have you been? Or, writing a note, said the little old goat, that's where I've been. I'm going to write a little note here. I'm going to write a little note that says, thank you. You know why? Teachers love to teach. We love to see kids learning new things. And I want to thank you for being with me today and helping me write parts of songs. Thank you for the wagon song. Thank you for figuring out how zipper songs work. And you can totally try this at home. You could try animals that live on the farm or animals that live in the jungle. You might want to do a whole book about bugs. Again, remembering it's hard to rhyme hippopotamus. So maybe you want to do um, cat, dog, you can find all sorts and just ask your family, give me an animal, give me an animal, and you can work on it together. What a cool project to come when you come back to school, when we get back to school, whenever it happens, and to bring that and show what you did on your own at your house with your family, making a book, a zipper song book of your very own. I have been Emily Flathers. It has been a pleasure to see you and keep on singing every day. Bye-bye. Good morning, students. I'm Michael Roberts, superintendent of the Osborne School District in Central Phoenix. And I'm Quentin Boyd, superintendent of the Roosevelt School District in South Phoenix. We're pleased to have this partnership with the City of Phoenix to take Phoenix students on a new learning adventure right here on Phoenix TV. Just because our school buildings are closed doesn't mean the learning stops. We have the best, most creative teachers from Roosevelt and Osborne School Districts on board to provide you with a great learning experience. Okay, students, that's the bell. So the Phoenix TV Study Hall resumes. Here is your next lesson. Hi, everyone. My name is Mark Dayat. I'm a K-3 PE teacher at Encanto Elementary School in the Osborne School District. And today we've got some activities to get you outside or in your house, have some fun, get moving around. And remember, we'll talk about these. Whatever you have, you don't have to have the same equipment as me. Substitute anything you want so you can have some fun. First thing we're going to talk about today is sun safety. It is hot out there. We want to protect ourselves from the sun. First thing we can do is take some sunscreen. Okay, two different time, kinds. You have some that you can spray on your body. Okay, and before you do this, you want to make sure you wash your hands. Okay, rub it in to all parts of your body. Okay, we also have some cream that you can use. A little bit on your hand. Same thing. Rub that all on your exposed skin. Okay. So a lot of talk about face today. 
We want to keep our face clean, but we still need to put some sunscreen on there. Rub that in as best you can, and you're only rubbing sunscreen on yourself right now. No, you're not helping your family or your friends. And again, when you're done, make sure you wash your hands, okay? Also, big hat you can wear. You see this one's got some wide brims on it, and it even has something for my neck. Put that on, I'm covered up. One other thing we can do, sunglasses, okay? We want to protect our eyes from the glare of the sun. Stay hydrated, okay? Always bring a water bottle with you around there. Try to, wait, try, to wait, try to stay away from soda and sugary snacks or drinks when you're outside, okay? If you're gonna be outside for a long time, got some long sleeve shirts you can wear to cover up your arms, and we also, you could wear some lightweight pants to cover up your legs, make sure that sun stays away. You wanna stay hydrated, okay? Hi, Chavez family. Today we're going to be reading a book called El gallo que no se callaba, the rooster who would not be quiet. And I love this book and I'm excited to share with you, so let's get started. I can see that the author is Carmen Agradivi and Eugene Yalchin. And if I have to guess what this book is about, well, I think it's about a rooster that would not be quiet because that's the title and I see what looks like a very loud rooster. It looks like this book is for Ruby Sam Igres. Y a todos los gallos de verdad. So Ruby Sam and Grace and to real roosters everywhere. And also Isaac and Ezra. I wonder if those are the, the author and illustrator's kids. Había una vez un pueblo donde las calles resonaban con canciones desde el amanecer hasta el anochecer. Once there was a village where the streets rang with song from morning till night. Oh, I love this picture. You can see a picture of the pueblo or the village. And there's a lot of activity. Los perros ladraban. Los ma las madres canturreaban. Los motors, motores zumbaban. Los fuentes borboteaban. Y todo el mundo cantaba en la ducha. Dogs bayed. Mothers crooned. Engines hummed. Fountains warbled. And everybody sing in the shower. Sounds like a fun place to me. You can see the town here again. Lots of lots of detail. Lots of noise. Cada persona y cada cosa tenía una canción. El pueblo, el pueblo de la paz era un lugar muy ruidoso. Era difícil escuchar. Era difícil dormir. Era difícil pensar. Y nadie sabía qué hacer. Así que despidieron al alcalde. Everyone and everything had a song to sing. This made the village of La Paz a very noisy place. It was hard to hear. It was hard to sleep. It was hard to think and no one knew what to do. So they fired the mayor. Yeesh. Okay, maybe not such a fun place. Really, really loud. I feel kind of bad for the mayor. Vote por Don Pepe. Ooh. I don't know, he doesn't look much better than the old guy. Let's see. Ahora era un pueblo muy ruidoso, sin alcalde. Por lo que hicieron elecciones, solo Don Pepe prometió paz y tranquilidad. Obtuvo una victoria aplastante. Al día siguiente, una ley muy respetuosa apareció en la plaza del pueblo. No cantar alto, perdón, no cantar alto en público, por favor. Las cosas ya estaban mejorando. 
Now they were a very noisy village without a mayor. So they held an election. Only Don Pepe promised peace and quiet. He won by a landslide. The next day, a very polite law appeared in the village square. No loud singing in public, por favor. Things were getting better already. I want to look at him again. Okay, he looks very quiet and the people look happy. I don't know, something about him seems kind of fishy. I don't like that pin. No music. Hmm, let's see. Pero muy pronto le siguieron otras leyes. No cantar alto en la casa. No cantar alto. No cantar. Basta. Cállense de una vez. Hasta que... But more laws soon followed. No loud singing at home. No loud singing. No singing. Basta. Quiet already. Until finally. El ruidoso pueblo de La Paz estaba tan silencioso como una tumba. Ooh. The noisy village of La Paz was silent as a tomb. Would you want to live in a village as silent as a tomb? I don't think I would. It sounds kind of boring. Hasta las teteras tenían miedo de pitar. Even the tea kettles were afraid to whistle. Okay, now that sounds rough because I love hot tea, and if a tea kettle can't whistle, well then, no hot tea for me. Ooh, look at that creepy mare. Poor tea kettle. Algunos se marcharon del pueblo, cantando a toda voz. Otros se quedaron y aprendieron a tararear. Los demás estaban muy felices de al fin poder dormir en paz. Some people left the village, singing loudly. Others stayed behind and learned to hum. The rest were just grateful to have a good night's sleep, for crying out loud. What do you think you'd do? Would you leave the village singing? Would you learn to hum? Or would you enjoy a good night's sleep? They say, adios, bye-bye. Pasaron siete años silenciosos. Entonces, una tarde, un pícaro gallito y su familia entraron al pueblo y se posaron en una olorosa mata de mango. Seven very quiet years passed. Then one evening, a saucy gallito and his family wandered into the village and roosted in a fragrant mango tree. Hmm. Let's see what he does with this quiet town and his family. Let's see. Cuando el gallito despertó a la mañana siguiente, hizo lo que todos los gallos hacen por naturaleza. Cantó, Kikiriki! When the little rooster awoke the next morning, he did what roosters were born to do. He sang, Kikiriki! Pero qué mala suerte tuvo el pobre gallito. Esa mata de mango estaba debajo de la ventana del alcalde Cascarradías. Ay, ay, ay. As his rotten luck would have it, the mango tree grew beneath the cranky mayor's window. Uh-oh. What do you think will happen next? Let's find out. Oh, there he is. Oye, tú, se quejó Don Pepe. Aquí no se canta. Es la ley. Bueno, esa sí es una ley tonta, dijo el alegre gallito. Aspira el dulce olor de esta mata de mango. ¿Cómo podría dejar de cantar? Bah, entonces cortaré ese árbol apestoso, resopló don Pepe. 
¿Contarías entonces? El intrépido gallito alzó los hombros. Contaría una canción menos alegre, pero cantaría y así lo hizo. You there, growled John Pepe. No singing. It's the law. Well, that's a silly law, said the merry gallito. Smell this sweet mango tree. How can I keep from singing? Humph! Then I'll chop down that stinky tree, huffed Don Pepe. Will you sing then? The Pucky Gallito shrugged. I may sing a less cheerful song, but I will sing. And he did. Well, it's so sad the mango tree is cut down, but the gallito doesn't seem to be bothered too much. Todavía sigues cantando? Gritó Don Pepe. Ya no tienes árbol, recuerdas? No tengo árbol, dijo el gallito, pero tengo a mi gallina y mis pollitos. ¿Cómo podría dejar de cantar? ¿Cantarías si te encierro solo en una guabla? Lo amenazó Don Pepe. Con cantaría una canción melancolía, dijo el terco gallito. Pero cantaría. Y así lo hizo. ¿Still singing? Snapped Don Pepe. You have no tree, remember? I have no tree said the gallito, but I have my hen and my chicks. How can I keep from singing? Will you sing if I throw you in a cage alone? Threatened Don Pepe. I may sing a lonelier song, said the stubborn gallito, but I will sing. And he did. Oh my gosh, there goes the mayor with the gallito. I'm glad I don't live in this town. This guy sounds mean. Kikiriki! Kikiriki! Looks like that didn't stop the gallito. He's still singing. Oh, that mayor looks really angry now. Kind of desperate looking. He looks like really, really upset. Y ahora, ¿por qué cantas? gruñó Don Pepe. No tienes ni gallina ni pollitos. No tengo ni gallina ni pollitos, suspiró el gallito. Pero aún tengo maíz para comer. ¿Cómo podrías dejar de cantar? ¿Y si no tuvieras maíz? preguntó el alcalde. Cantaría una canción hambrienta, dijo el gallito. Testarudo, pero cantaría. Y así lo hizo. Why are you singing now? growled Don Pepe. You have no hen and chicks. No hen and chicks, the gallito sighed. But I still have corn to eat. How can I keep from singing? And if you have no more corn? asked the mayor. I may sing a hungrier song, said the headstrong gallito. But I will sing. And he did. Kikiriki! Kikiriki! No tienes hambre, gallo, chiflado, grimió Don Pepe. Claro, dijo el gallito, pero si el sol puede brillar a pesar de los pesares de este mundo, ¿cómo podrías dejar de cantar? ¿Y si nunca más vieras el sol? rugió el alcalde corriendo a buscar una manta para cubrir la aula. Cantaría una canción sombría, respondió el valiente gallito. Pero cantaría. Y así lo hizo. Aren't you a hungry? Or aren't you hungry, you crazy bird? Well, Don Pepe. 
Claro, of course, said the gallito. But if the sun can still shine despite this world's troubles, how can I keep from singing? And if you never see the sun again, snarled the mare, and he ran off for a blanket to cover the rooster's cage. I may sing a darker song, the brave gallito called after him, but I will sing. And he did. Wow, that's a brave rooster. And, uh, very optimistic too, like he really sees the bright side in things. <laughs> Literally, the sun, it's very bright. Oh, that mayor does not look optimistic though. He looks miserable, even with all that beautiful sun in the background. Kikiriki, kikiriki. Oh, I can tell that the gallitos under the blanket because the whole page is dark. I like how the artist did that made it really dark, but looks like he's still singing. Oh, I kind of forgot about all the people in this town, but it looks like they're waking up. Yeah, look, they're all peeking out of their windows. They look kind of afraid, but also curious. Hmm, let, let's see what they do. <laughs> oh my gosh, what happened to the mayor? A medida que el eco del canto del gallito resonaba por las silenciosas calles de la paz, despertó en los vecinos el recuerdo de una época en que cada persona y cada cosa tenía una canción. Pero no en Don Pepe. El canto le provocaba indigestión. Oh my gosh. As the gallito's song echoed down the soundless streets of La Paz, it stirred an old familiar longing for a time when everyone and everything had a song to sing. Not so with Don Pepe. Singing gave him indigestion. Kikiriki! 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 Oh my gosh, the gallo keeps singing and singing and singing. And I think Don Pepe is on the floor because he has indigestion, which means he has stomach problems, probably because he's so stressed out with the singing gallito. Also, I just remembered connection. The town is called La Paz. And I just remembered that's where Cesar Chavez lived when he was a little bit older. That's where the Chavez Foundation is now. Oh boy, he looks very unhappy now. Al día siguiente, Don Pepe salió al patio, dando tropezones en su ropón de dormir. Le quitó la manta a la aula y comenzó a suplicar. No tienes árbol donde posarte, ni gallina ni pollitos para consolarte, ni granos para llenarte la barriga, ni sol para ayudar. Las sombras, o las sombras. ¿Por qué? ¿Pero por qué sigues cantando? Prométame que pararás y te, si, te daré la libertad. The next day, Don Pepe stumbled out to the yard in his nightshirt. He tore away the blanket and pleaded, You have no tree to roost in. No hens and chicks to comfort you. No grain to fill your belly. No sun to drive away the shadows. Why, oh why are you still singing? Promise to stop and I will set you free. Huh, what do you think that guy Ito will do? You think he'll stop? Oof, that mayor's so angry looking. Uno a uno, los vecinos comenzaron a congresar en el patio de Don Pepe. Canto por aquellos que no se atreven a cantar o que han olvidado cómo hacerlo, dijo el gallito. 
si tengo que cantar por ellos, Señor? ¿Cómo podría dejar de cantar? ¿Y si te convierto en sopa? Tronó el alcalde. Uh. Supongo que contarás hasta después de muerto. Oh, I just realized that was alcalde so talking, right? So oh, it's more like this, right? Supongo que contarás hasta después de muerto. One by one, a quiet crowd began to gather in Don Pepe's yard. I sing for those who dare not sing or have forgotten how, said the gallito. If I must sing for them as well, senor, how can I keep from singing? And if I have made you into a soup, the mayor thundered, I suppose will you still sing if you are dead? It's an interesting question. Todo el pueblo aguantó la respiración y esperó la respuesta del gallito. Gallo muerto. No canta, dijo. ¡Ja! Alardeó Don Pepe, seguro de haber ganado. The entire village held its breath waiting for the gallito's reply. Dead roosters sing no songs, he said. ¡Ja! Crowed Don Pepe, sure he had won. I'm feeling worried that Don Pepe is going to turn him into a soup. But it seems like the rooster has another idea, maybe. The people look sad, though, too. I think they like the rooster. Yeah, like this, they're all hanging their heads, which shows me they're kind of sad. Hmm. It's bright and sunny on this page, though. Pero una canción es más poderosa que el canto de un gallito ruidoso y más fuerte que un alcalde tirano, dijo el gallito. Y mi canto vivirá mientras haya alguien que lo cante. Y así fue. But a song is louder than one noisy little rooster and stronger than one bully of a mayor, said the gallito. And it will never die, so long as there is someone to sing it. And there was. Whew, look at all the people singing. My gosh, they remembered, it looks like. They remembered how to sing. Kikiriki! 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 Adios! Looks like the mayor is leaving La Paz. Una vez más había un pueblo donde las calles resonaban con canciones desde el amanecer hasta el anochecer. Por eso el pueblo de La Paz era un lugar muy ruidoso y a todos les encantaba que fuera así. Once again, there was a village where the streets rang with song from morning till night. This made for a very noisy place to live. And that's just the way everyone liked it. I can see there's so many people and creatures moving, lots of music, lots of color. The end. So that's the end of this story, but I do want to read the author's note. I think what the author has to say is really, uh, really nice. So I'll read it in Spanish and in English. Nota de la autora. Los gallos cantan al amanecer, también al mediodía, al atardecer y en medio de la noche. Los gallos, en fin, cantan cuando quieren, y eso no se puede cambiar. Al igual de los gallos, los niños nacen con voces fuertes, honestas y irreprimibles. Luego, poco a poco, casi todos aprendemos a moderar nuestras opiniones 
a censurar lo que pensamos y a callar nuestra voz. Pero no todos. Siempre hay quienes se resisten a ser silenciados, quienes cacarean su verdad sin inmortales las consecuencias. Imprudentes o sabios, ellos son los que nos dan el valor a volver a cantar. Carmen Agradivi, the author. So in English, the author's note. Roosters sing at sunrise. They also sing at noon, sundown, and in the middle of night. Roosters sing when they please, and that's all there is to that. Much like roosters, human children are born with voices strong and true and irrepressible. It's like you can't push them down. Then, bit by bit, most of us learn to temper our opinions, censor our beliefs, and quiet our voices. But not all of us. There are always those who resist being silenced, who will crow out their truth without regard to consequence. Foolhardy or wise, they are the ones who give us the courage to sing. That's a pretty powerful message from the author. And I had a lot of connections while reading this story. So I want to I wanna share a connection and then I want to uh, ask that you share one as well. So while I was reading, so that's the end, of, that's the back page of the book. I want to go back to the cover. So while I was reading the story, The Rooster Who Would Not Be Quiet, I was thinking of a lot of leaders I know who, who aren't afraid to do what's right, even when things are tough. Can you think of anyone you know who does what's right, even when they might be scared? Or there might be consequences? So I thought of Cesar Chavez because he, he felt in his heart that he knew what was right for the people, for farm workers and for his community. And he didn't stop. He didn't stop. Dolores Huerta, she was the same. She didn't stop. They stood up and they fought for what was right. Kind of like the rooster Cesar Chavez did a hunger strike and he didn't eat for, I think it was 37 days to prove that there were things greater than food, which is a pretty big deal. Um, so that's someone who came to mind who reminded me of the rooster. So I want you to have some fun, but also really think deeply and think of a time when you or someone you know was strong and brave like the rooster in this story. And I want you to draw a picture and share that with me. Thank you all for listening and I hope you enjoyed El Gallo Que No Se Callaba, The Rooster Who Would Not Be Quiet. Hi, I'm Lauren Kennedy, the art teacher at Chavez Leadership Academy. Today I'm going to teach you how to read a photograph. I know that reading photographs probably sounds kind of boring as far as photography goes, but it's one of the most important lessons we can learn as a photographer and as an artist. Because if you can like read photographs really, really well, then you can take photographs really, really well. And the reason for that is it's all about seeing. And when we can read something well, we're seeing what's in front of us really, really well. And then the same starts to happen when we're behind a camera. So let's get started. You only need a couple materials for this lesson, so something to write with. You could use a computer if, instead if you prefer, and something to take a picture with. Let's look at a photograph. In just a moment, I'm going to ask you to write about the photograph that we're looking at. This is a free write. A free write means that you're not censoring your thoughts. You write just what comes to mind. Look at the photograph carefully, and when you're ready, start your free write.
Welcome back. Really congratulations, you just read a photograph. It's pretty simple, but I am going to give you a guide to help you break it down a little bit more so that when you're feeling stuck or you are looking to dig deeper, you have the toolkit to do that. So think of yourself like a detective, okay? Anytime we're reading something, we're really like a detective, trying to use all the clues we can to make sense of our world. So four simple steps to do that. Step one is describe what you see. Step two, analyze. Three, interpret. And four, evaluate. Now, let's put that into action with that photograph. The first step is to describe what do you see. I see a black and white photograph. I see baby swings in the foreground. They look kind of worn out. I see caution tape. Uh, the background is really blurry. It looks like a play structure though and some trees. I think this is like a playground or a park or something like that. Step two, analyze. So what's the relationship between the things that I see? So as I mentioned, the background is really blurry. The swings with the caution tape wrapped around them are the only thing in focus. And it kind of looks like the caution tape is separating those swings from the, frame, from the rest of the picture, from the rest of the setting. And because the caution tape is tied, like it's intentionally tied around the chains of the swings, they're not able to move. They're not able to swing. Three, interpret. So what's the story? What's the message of this picture? Well, the swings are trapped. Like I said, they can't swing. So to me, they look like prisoners. I kind of think of the swings as prisoners in their own home because they're still on a playground, but they're not able to do what they do best. They're not able to swing. 
Step four, evaluate. How does this picture make you feel and do you like it? This picture makes me feel kind of sad and frustrated and confused because the swings can't do what they like to do. Um, but I do like it because I, I think I relate to the swings right now. I think a lot of people, including myself, are feeling like prisoners in their own home. We're feeling a little confused and trapped and like we can't move freely and do what we want to do. So I think because I connect to the swings and I, I kind of see the swings as human in this photograph, I do like it. So that's it. We just read a photograph. Here's your call to action. Take a picture and ask someone else to read it. They could write about the picture or simply tell you about it, but either way, this is a really great exercise to see just how differently we can perceive the same thing. And we'll be working a lot more with perspective in lesson two. So I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.